Think about the number one question that I get. I want you to, I want to tell you what it is. How do you relax your subject when they're in front of your camera? How do you do that? Number one question I get. You know how easy it is to answer? It's not very easy, is it? The answer is by having more confidence when you're behind the camera. A photographer who's confident in their craft, the subject feels it, the subject knows it. There's no reason for tension if the, if the person's confident in this photographer is photographing them. There would be no reason for them to be relaxed because they, it would already be there. The fact that a photographer would have to say relax to a subject is already blows my mind because you're drawing attention to a, to a problem. Photographers do it all the time. What I want you to do is I want you to have a skill set that's built up through, this, through these ideas so that your subject has confidence in you and you're more confident when you stand behind that camera with a person in front of it. So yeah, we're going to key in on headshots. But it works whether this person's three feet in front of you or they're across the room. I've shot continuous lighting with a white background with, you know, different cameras over the years, right? But the technical stuff aside, not much has changed. What changes for me? The person that's right in here. That's what changes. So that's all I need to work on, is how I'm gonna work with different individuals. And humans are, hum, every, humans different. Everybody's gonna behave differently. You're aware of that. This is key. So you knowing what to do with every type of human that you could possibly encounter and having your way of doing it. It's gotta be your way of doing it. That's what we're gonna key in on. I'm gonna give you some ideas to get that going. All right, so Gina, oh my gosh, hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna key in a couple key things that I do when I'm shooting. Okay. All right, the first thing I want you to think about is your jawline. So I'm gonna teach you some moves, my main moves to help accentuate it. You ready? All ready. I want you to imagine first off that you are, there is a hook in the top of your head and it's in the center, like the crown of your skull. Okay. And it's attached to a string and it's attached to the ceiling and, and it's being pulled up, you're being pulled up like this. Very straight, so you're like from slouch straight up, all right? Then what I want you to, imagine the camera's in front of me. I'm doing it this way so that you can see this. Imagine the camera's in front of me. I'm gonna, you're gonna be hooked up. So when I say hook it, it means to hold yourself up like this, and then you're gonna jam your forehead forward like this, keeping your, the center of your spine back and your shoulders relaxed. I don't want you to be like this, right? I, and I want you to keep the center of your spine back while your chin goes out. So it f should feel completely awkward. awkward. Okay. All right? I feel that. You should feel awkward. <laughs> but it will give you an incredible jawline. Okay. All right, I want you to try that. I'm going to take a shot of it. Just keep your hook in. Now jam your forehead out a little further and then come down. That's amazing. All right, hold that right there. Fan freaking tastic. Beautiful. Love it. Good. Amazing. Wow. I'm a little low, I gotta raise my, I love what the color of the gray in the background. Jam the forehead out. We turn the strobe off and we got some gray in the background. Chin down slightly from there, good. Now, what I want you to do just for our demonstration purposes is I want you to go chin down, but I don't want you to hook it. I want you to just stand kind of slouchy. I want you to go, I want you to bring your chin straight back a little bit, soften that jawline. And I want you to look here, hold that, good. Now go straight out and hook it right from there. Good, hold that. Amazing, amazing difference, amazing. That is gorgeous. You have a beautiful jawline when you do that. Do you know that? Now, over the course of this shoot, I'm gonna have you doing that the whole time. I want, on occasion, I will turn your shoulders slightly to one side or the other. So turn your shoulders towards the windows, towards the windows. Yeah, go like that. Now go nose that way too. Now, if you go chin out there, show me that, and chin down. Forehead out further, just like before. Now look over here. Good. Does that feel awkward and strange? So it feels awkward. very strange. Okay, so I don't want you to do that. I want you to stay on that angle, but I'm going to give you a move that I call my Egyptian move. Okay. All right, I want your nose to go that way, and I want you to stand up straight. But instead of your forehead going forward, as soon as you turn, I don't want your forehead going forward. I want it to go. I want your jawline to go towards your shoulder. So I want your, your right jaw to go towards your right shoulder. Can you do, yes. Oh my gosh, you're a professional. Look here while you're doing it. 
And now go forward just a smidge with the chin. Good. That's called an Egyptian move, guys. So it's going, going like, you know the Egyptians, how they do this thing where they go like this? That's what, what I want. If the, if the subject turns away from the camera, what happens is if the jawline goes out, it's like this, it's weird, it's strange and unusual. So what you want is you go like this. You, they just go like that and they bring this jawline towards their, whichever shoulder come, the, comes to the front. That's the move. All right, and that's only when they turn. And I, I don't want the body turned too much. I never turn the body that much anyway. Turn your, keep, let's keep your body slightly turned. Not too much, but right about there. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to drop your back shoulder back. No, your back shoulder like this. And then go chin down and go, yeah, like that. Hold that right there. Guys, this is the reason why I don't drop the back shoulder. Dropping the back shoulder creates this. Think about this. Right? Dropping the front shoulder creates this, which strengthens the jawline. So let's turn, stay turned that way. Mm -hmm. Let's drop the front shoulder and go nose a little bit that way. There you go. Okay, chin down a little bit. Turn your body a little bit less. I don't want the body turned too much. Go nose like this, though. There, hold that. That's it. Now your front shoulder is down, and I got a really solid jawline. That's beautiful. All right. So that's all cool. I like everything that's going on here. I want you to try stay turned on that on that. Shoulder. Now drop the front shoulder down. Turn the body a little bit less. That's two turn. We're going to stay a little right there. Now go chin out and down. Get your chin out and down and work the nose this way. There you go. Now do your Egyptian thing from there. That's it. Hold that and work the nose a little bit this way. Now guys, stay in that position, Gina. Gina dropped her shoulder, dropped her chin, and now she's physically lower than she was. My tripod was set for the center of her chin, but she just went down an inch. This is why I have my center column that rotates and goes up and down. So now I'm down. However, she's got her front shoulder down and I like people to look very square in the camera. So this is a move that I call the tilt untilt move. So she's tilted. I'm going to untilt her with the camera. So I'll take a shot, drop your shoulder down even more, turn the body a little bit less. I don't like this tilting action. Nose back this way, do the Egyptian. That, hold it right there and I'm going to show you the tilt. Good. Now I'm going to use my grid in my camera to actually untilt her. This appears, I lowered my camera, but I still appear high. Stay in that same position, jam the forehead out, turn the shoulder less, the other way, turn less. Now nose back this way, nose back this way. Now, yes, and nose this way a little bit. Hold that right there. Now I'm gonna stay low and I'm gonna use my grid to go through the shoulders. Tilt your head less than that. This way, follow my hand, hold that. Tilt this way, there you go, hold that. And hold that right there. And I'm gonna actually untilt her with the camera and I'm gonna use the grid to go straight through the shoulders to get her to appear less tilted. And now you can see the angle on my camera is ridiculous, but she's not as tilted as she appeared over there. And that's, and that's a key element for me in keeping the, the very, uh, very simple way to keep the, get the jawline by getting the shoulder down, but untilt her to straighten her up. We'll do more of that as we go. That's my, one of my favorite moves. And I use the grid inside the camera to usually line it up on the nose like this so that it's very straight and it straightens out. Let me try another one like that. Turn on that angle again, right there. Drop the front shoulder down, jam the forehead out. The head has to be tilted like chin down a little bit. Hold that, hold that, that's it. Don't tilt the shoulder so much, that's too severe. Tilt like that and turn your body out this way a little bit. Keep going. Now go nose this way a little bit. Hold that right there, hold that. Chin down a little bit, tilt head a little bit this way. Hold that, hold that right there, that's good. I can work with that. Cool. It's more like it's very similar, but it keeps it simple, gets me jawline, and it gets her not looking so tilted. If I, and you saw the way it looked when I shot it the first time. Why don't you come out and I'll show you some of this stuff. Okay, so if you look. Oh wow, that's definitely not how look. it felt. Yeah, it feels, it feels different, it feels weird, but looks good, right? felt very strange. Oh, very strange. See how tilted very the body up. is? Yeah. So, guys, if you notice when in this shot, the shoulders are going out of frame on an angle like this. Um, what I did was I I decreased that angle by untilting her with the camera. 
when I do this Egyptian move, I, it's when I'm dropping the shoulder and turning them because you can't do the forehead out as much. It has to go to the side. But what I found was that I was teaching for a very long time dropping the shoulder. And what that would do is would put the body on this kind of weird angle coming out of the camera and the weird angle I never liked. So I decided to take my camera, keep the jawline very strong. Like, see how beautiful your jawline looks? I love that. Amazing. But I don't like that your shoulder's down and you look that tilted. Mm -hmm. So I still have the strong jawline, but now you look straighter. Mm -hmm. So that is, you now you have to make the, the head line up with the body to do it. But we still got the jawline and then she's straight in this scenario. Works a lot better. Gina, this is where we started. Great. Straight on shot, decent jawline, but then, and I, and I already had you hooked in getting the jawline out. <laughs> and then I had you do this on, on purpose. So you can obviously see the huge difference that having your jawline out makes. Yeah, incredible. On the camera, it's a huge, it's just your beauty. A lot of, most people's beauty is in the jawline. It's the first, first and most important thing that I do. So I, everything revolves around the jawline first. Once I get the body in position, I go straight for the jawline and then I work from there. Um, you can see that when you turn to the side, it gets a little weird when you go with the chin out. It looks yeah. like you're straining, right? Yeah, Although it does. it's pretty on that angle. And now you're bringing your, now you're back further but you're bringing your forehead this way, mm -hmm. um, which is the Egyptian move to get that jawline, um, to get the jawline oh. stronger like that, but not have the chin out so far. Wow. If you drop the front shoulder down, the back shoulder down, if you drop the back shoulder down, this happens. Oh. You never drop the back shoulder because you get double chin there. All right, if you drop the front shoulder down, then this happens, right? If you drop it too far, this happens, and I don't like it to look too far dropped, so I've got to drop my camera, and then I've got to untilt you with the camera. So then I did this, wow. and then we did that, which got the camera untilted so you don't look as contorted as you actually are. Yeah, did definitely it, did not feel like it, how this looks. Right, it felt contorted, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Very awkward. <laughs> Conveying to your subject that it feels weird but looks good is key guys mm -hmm. confidence is learned i know i don't care where you, what level you're at now i don't care how you feel about yourself now behind the camera i want you to put that camera i want you to look through that viewfinder and i want you to be more confident the next time you put a human being in there and that's what i want and that combined i want your attention to detail to go through the roof like mine if you're more confident as yourself with your personality behind your camera and you've got more attention to detail you are in a different hemisphere than where, where, you're, where you're sitting right now. All right, so guys, so now I'm gonna have her do a move that I call is holding your sub. So most people, whenever they're in front of a camera, they put their hands on their hips. So put your hands on your hips. A lot, that is a normal place for people to put their hands in a photograph. And whenever something's being photographed, if you don't talk to somebody about their arms, a lot of people will put them there. It's just a comfortable spot for us to put our arms in a headshot. It's not a good thing, I'll show you why. Hold that, now drop your hands. Good, hold that one. Now act like you're holding a six foot sub. It's a big sub, relax the shoulders, keep the elbows in. There you go, right there, get that chin out and down still. There you go, good, okay. Now come out, I wanna show you something. So here oh, wow. is why you don't, especially in a headshot, I mean I think in shots in general, you don't put your hands on your hips. Most people find it very easy to put their hands on their hips in pictures. Hands on hips isn't that great. If the hands go down, it's okay. Like your hands are down. But again, look at the angle of the, I want you guys to look at the angle of the arm, the way it goes out of frame. It's a, if the bottom of the frame's like this, the arm's going out on an angle. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. This angle right here. Yep. This angle. Watch when you hold your sub. <gasps> oh my God. I mean, you love that. I love that. High five. That there we go. Fantastic. Of course you love that, right? Wow. Look at that. Look at that. So this is what? hands on hips, hands just hanging by her side, holding her sub. Guys, the goal here is to slim the arms, so you got to watch them. Like if this doesn't work and you have somebody standing like this the whole time, it's not the most comfortable thing. 
Some people, it depends on the top they're wearing, it won't do anything. Some people, it'll work like this, but the minute they turn like this, you've got them standing like this the whole shoot, and it doesn't do anything on an angle. It only does it if you're looking straight forward. So make sure the key to this is that the elbows are in. Some people's bodies, they have like a lot of lat area. They're maybe wider in here girth-wise, and they can't get their elbows to touch their body. So they won't be able to get their elbows in far enough to make this work. They're already stuck out here, so it won't help them that much unless you can get them to position it properly. And you have to watch it. The elbows in, hands very flat, and wide. The sub's got to be wide. You got to watch this, this angle. It's not a straight out thing like this. It's got to be wide and elbows have to be in. If you have clothes on, it's going to change it. So you got to see what they're wearing. If they're wearing with women, they wear a lot of strappy tops and stuff like the, if the arms are bare skin, this really works, right? So I usually use it if I'm seeing skin on the arm. Um, if they're covered, it doesn't do as much, but again, you're the photographer. You have to look through your viewfinder and see if it's working. So that little move, guys, immediately, this is one of the keys of the entire tutorial. The key is, how do you feel about my knowledge base teaching you stuff like this? You feel like I know what I'm talking about? Oh, absolutely. That's the key. You got yeah. it? That's all I want you, your sub, I want your subject to believe in you so that they listen to you and know what you're talking about. If I have other tricks like this, you want to know what they are, right? I want them all. Absolutely. And now one of my favorite tricks, so we already went over the jawline, now we've got the arms. These are the two things that I'm going to be doing with you. Now if you turn to the side, we won't need to hold, I, don't, I, I definitely don't need you holding the sub the entire time. We'll, we'll work with that. We'll experiment with it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, if I shoot below the waist, obviously you can't hold the sub, right? But one of the things that, for me, that really drives my work home is confidence coming from the individual. And the thing that turns me off the most is fear coming from the individual. So do you know where confidence and fear come from in the human response when we look at people? Um, the eyes? Yes. You've heard deer in the headlights? Oh, yes. That Man. makes sense now. Do you see your eyes? Does that, I feel like I have to go like this to wake her up, right? That's yes. not you. That's yeah. you in front of a camera. When you look into an inanimate object like the camera, you, you get a little vacant looking, right? Which sure. is normal. That's a normal human response. You're not looking at a human in the eye. I want to create that illusion that you're looking at a person instead of looking in a camera. Okay. In order to do that, what do you think that your eyes should do? Focus. Focus, yeah, focus. But what, what, what can your eyes do? Think about what they can do in general. What can they do? They can get bigger or smaller. Exactly. So that's, <laughs> the, that's all you can do with them. So do they look big here or small? They look big -ish. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what we yeah. want to do is I want you to make them smaller, but I want you to do it very subtly, and I want you to do it a very specific way. Okay. Are you ready? Let's I'm going to teach you how to do that. All right, so Gina's got a sense of what's going on here. The big move for me is my squinch. So I'm going to educate her on it. If you guys, you can have, we're, we'll talk about numerous ways of, of getting somebody to squinch. But for now, my main thing and the thing that really, really drives it home is my ability to do it. You have to be able to do it. You've got to practice it. You've got to be able to do it well so you can convey to them in this way, I dive into their face and show them myself doing it. And you're going to see that right now. So Gina, right, when you, did you see how your eyes got big when you got in front of the Did you yeah. feel it? You yeah. felt it, right? All right. Yeah. So watch my eyes. Watch my eyes. Okay. I want you to practice with me. I want you to try to isolate your lower eyelid and not move your upper lids down. Watch my eyes. Okay. Watch my eyes like this. Very subtly, watch. See that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at you. <laughs> That's perfect. Good feels, job. That's still, good. Yeah. feels weird, right? Feels weird. In my old tutorial, I said that I had made up, I made up a word and it got me on Good Morning America. It's called squinching. Okay. So you will squinch. It's narrowing the distance between your lower eyelid and your pupil. I needed a word for it. I came up with it. It went viral, went crazy. So let's try, <laughs> okay. let's try a squinch. Okay, I want you to do your hook. I want you to keep your, absolutely. Relax those shoulders, chill them out, perfect. Keep the elbows in. There you go, good. 
That's it. Now get your jawline out. Good. Now I want you to throw, sneak a squinch by me. Yeah, don't overdo it. Don't go crazy. That's it. A little bit more. Try a little bit more. Chin down a little bit. There, now try it there. There you go. Go a little further with it. I can take it. Okay. There you go. Good. Now. That's it. Now. The situation that we're in yeah. is that if you squinch without a hint of a smile, you look like a real bitch. Okay. Don't want that. <laughs> no, we don't want that. We don't want that. So I want, exactly, you want to be approachable. Yeah. So this is what we're doing. So the confidence comes to the eyes. Where's the approachability come from? The mouth. Yeah. Absolutely. I wanted a shot that I could get of every single person that got in front of my camera that would work for me and propel my career and get them something that would work for them. And it was, I decided that it was one that conveyed these two things. I call it CNA, confidence coupled with approachability. So the confidence part, as, as humans, confidence comes from the eyes, so does fear. So deer in the headlights is big, confidence is squinching, which we now know, which I didn't know at the time, but now I know it. Um, approachability comes from the mouth. So if the mouth's flat, no approachability. You add a hint of a smile, there's some approachability there. So when you add the two together, you have lethal combination. It kills a shoot instantaneously. I do a corporate shoot, corporate guy comes in here, I get confidence coupled with approachability. I'm like, bye-bye, see ya, thank you very much, ching, gone. Get an actor in here and they need to spend like an hour with you or more. You know, usually my sessions are an hour these days. Corporate people, they may pay for the hour, but the minute that they get CNA, they're done. You know, it's over. I'll be like, ah, just stay in there for another five minutes just so I can get a little bit more. But it really can kill the shoot for you. It's a lethal combination. So it's the combination that you have to go for right away the minute that you get started. And once you get it, then the rest is gravy and you just play. In order to get it, we've got to work very closely with the person on what their face is doing. I want you to understand that you're in charge of their face. Their expressions, you own them when they're in your viewfinder. That is your turf. Once you look through your viewfinder and you see a human being in there, their expression is yours. Why? Because they do not know what their face looks like. Their brain will try and tell them, but you're their mirror, you're going to know. So immediately you have to be in charge of that and you have to convey to them what it is that you want. So I start with what I consider direct direction. Direct direction is directly telling your person what you want them to do. So in order to get CNA, we need two things to happen. We need a tiny squinch and a tiny smile. Or maybe we could say a little squinch and a tiny smile. That's all I need. If I can get the eyes from being big like this to squinchy and the mouth from being flat to tiny smile, I've got the combo that I need and I can shoot away with it. You add the angle of their face that is the most attractive for them, make sure their comfort level's there, and now you're firing on, on all cylinders at a different level. So I want you to do a closed mouth, tiny hint of a smile. Good, tiny hint of a smile, just like that. Watch my mouth, go from here to here. Yeah, just like that. And then hit the squinch at the same time. So you gotta remember to keep the smile, don't let the smile go. While simultaneously getting your jawline out, holding your sub, and getting your arms out. All of this is, lay I'm layering this in, guys. It's like a, she's an onion and I'm just adding layers onto it, like layering it like an onion. Does that make sense? I'm layering it, we're layering. There you go, get your, get your elbows, that's it. Yep, just like an onion, jam the forehead out. Do your tiny hint of a smile, little squinch. There it is, there it is, there, there it is. Squinch it harder even, I'll take it. Chin up slightly, unbelievable, that's it. Hold that, there you go. Oh my gosh. Does that look nice? That looks pretty good, I think. Yes, it looks gorgeous, exactly. The confidence is there, the hint of the smile. Without the smile, it gets a little flat. Okay. Now, as you go, you're gonna get used to it and you're gonna add it in and it'll become more and more and more, uh, it'll look real. It'll look like it's organic and spontaneously coming through you. And the third thing that we work on are the brows, which add another layer to it. It's just another layer and I love the brows more because it adds more expression. If you look around, I want you to go outside or go to a restaurant or like walk around in public and watch people. They're generally, as humans, we utilize our brows a lot. In pictures, brows aren't used very often. I happen to like 
to engage brows in my pictures because it's a little harder for photographers to get something where there's brow activity. So I'll always add brow activity to what I'm doing. I love it. And I consider brows the golden headshots. If I can get a little bit of brow activity, I got gold, baby. I'm like mining for gold with those brows. So you always hear me saying crazy things about the brows just to see what the brows will do. There's no, it's very difficult to tell somebody exactly what you want done with the brows. One of my things that I like is brow pressure. It's this. Little brow pressure goes a long way. If you get a mean mouth with brow pressure, you look like a real prick. Not good. So you got it, you're layering. Again, we're layering like an onion on this, okay? So we're concocting first. Once they learn it, it starts to become part of them and then they'll, it, it will become, it'll appear, it won't appear as posed as it, as it is at, the, at this very moment. Yeah. Why don't you come out and look at those? Okay, let's to illustrate this, we're going back to this shot uh, where she started, where I was not directing her face. I was just taking pictures. Um, and you can see that her eyes are big. So when I start to teach the squinch, we move into it rather slowly. Let's just see. There's no squinch here, right? This is still very open-eyed. This is, this is where we were doing the hold your sub thing, right? The eyes are still wide. Now watch when I start to teach the squinch. It appears a little bit too much and she appears mean, right? The mouth is kind of flat. The eyes are just over squinching mm -hmm. a little bit too much. There's not, much there's, there's not much energy coming out of it, yeah. right? And now the mouth went flatter and it just got a little stranger. It just doesn't work. It does not work if you, if you don't combine the mouth with the squinch, it's not gonna, it's not gonna add the approachability. So let's see what happens. Now we're starting to get a little hint of a smile there. But now we got an eye difference that I gotta watch out for. We got heavy lids. I gotta bring your chin down to open up a heavy lid. Watch the difference. Now that, now it's a little get, got a little bit more energy than I want out yeah. of it, but it's really cute. Now we got the squinch with the smile. Something like that. So something like that from something like this. So we went from wow. there to here. That's basically, and now that she's got a sense huh. of it, I can fine tune it. You're doing it. Yeah. If your subject is doing it properly like you are, you can fine tune it as you go. It's gonna take some time for that to sink in and the subtlety of it. What I am noticing is that the left eye goes a little smaller than the right eye. Yeah. So I may have her do independent squinching. There is, there is one thing that's, that's was a real problem for me for years when I was when I was starting and that was an eye difference when somebody had one I call it the BDI syndrome they have one eye that's real small and one eye that's real big and it shows up very prevalent in uh, in the camera and and this took me I didn't know this when we did the RPI in the headshot I had no clue I remember I used to have all this theory and technique on this. I used to be like, okay, we have to put the small eye in the front and then drop the head down so it makes the smaller eye look up so it opens it up to match the big eye. That's what I thought. Or I had to just shoot people straight on and then flip it in Photoshop. This was what I was resorting to. Because awareness changes. As you, as you get better as a photographer, your awareness is going to change. And then I realized one day I was like, wait a minute, the small eye, what if the small eye is on, not on their good side, then it would have to go behind. So I'd be shooting people on their bad side just to get the eye difference right. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? I shouldn't do that. I, got a need, I need a solution for this. Guess what the solution is. You can't open a small eye because if you open a small eye, it'll look fearful. But guess what? You can close big eye down. So now all I do, this is the trick that took me probably 13 years, 14 years. I probably discovered this. You could probably go back and see my video. 14 years, 2014, maybe three years ago, I figured this out. Independent squinching. That's a severe move just to show you on camera, but watch. I have a slight eye difference. Too. So when I'm shooting, I can actually make, I believe it's, I believe my right eye is a little bit bigger. I can make my right eye go a little smaller. And since humans have the capacity to learn and they want to get it right, guess what? They will do this for you. 
and it, you have to say, it feels weird, but it looks good. Feels weird, looks good. Nobody's going to know how you felt the moment it was taken. They're going to know how you look. So we only care about it feeling weird, looking good. You tell them that immediately. You're again, building their confidence in you, chilling them out. And guess what happens? This is the most amazing thing too. Once the subconscious gets involved over the course of the shoot, guess what happens to the eye difference over the course of the shoot? It subsides. So at the end of the shoot, the eye difference is not as big as the, at the beginning of the shoot either. This is all deep stuff, guys. This is big stuff. But the minute you know it, you now know one of my best tips that I can possibly give you because somebody who has this knows they've had it their whole life and they're going to be amazed by you that you, that you sorted it out for them. Okay, guys. So if she just, if, if she just stepped in front of the camera and I did not coach her on jawline or facial expression or anything, we may end up with something like this. Now in this one in particular, I probably brought her chin back to over to accentuate the, the dub, double chinsville that she is in. However, look at the expression. I didn't talk to her about the expression and watch the difference when we jump to this one. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, right? I want to talk to her. Amazing. Yeah, you want to talk to her? Yeah. Exactly. For this argument's sake. Amazing. Look at the difference. Look at the arms. Wow. Look at the body. Look at the, look at the, the eyes. Squinching, number one thing you have to do is do it yourself with them so that they understand how it's done. You have to be able to do it well yourself. You also have to can convey to them that it actually works and that it's accepted in society. Some people think, no, I don't know. And they won't allow themselves to do it because it feels so foreign to them. I use visuals. So I will find pictures of celebrities online and show them, look, this is squinching. This is not squinching. I have a squinch book that's been sitting in my studio for eons uh, where I've compiled these pictures. I'll show them some of my own work where somebody's not squinching and into a squinch. And these are all tools that are necessary to get this going. If you're just getting started, you may want photos on your phone. You can put them on your phone. You can put a book together. This is my actual book that I still, still have sitting around the studio of the squinching. You can put something together like this. Um, but you could, you could show where somebody's not looking confident and where they are. Any tools that you can use to help you. One of the things that a lot of my headshot crew members do is that they send out my squinch video to the, to the client to watch before they come into the session. I don't do that because I don't want to send that to somebody who already squinches. I want to find out in here how they're going to behave. I don't do any prep with jawline or sending out my videos. If they haven't have seen them, great, you saw them. All right, we're going to do that in here. But I don't want anybody preconceiving notions of what's going to go on in front of my camera. I really have to, I want, I, I call it, a, I'm going to clean slate them. I want them a total clean slate. That's all I want. Now the key is if the person is confident in you behind your camera, they're going to relax. They're going to squinch for you. Guys, this is what it's about. This is what you get to do. You get to teach people how to do this. When you're not with me, you now know how to do this. I want yeah. you to do this in front of cameras from I now will. on. I right? will do nothing but this. And, and the beauty of the person comes out. That's what you're going to find. And now that she's confident with it, with feeling strange and awkward in all these positions, she's going to get better and better and better in there. That's what we're all about. High five. Good job. Thank you. I think looking at the back of the camera, everybody looks good this big, you know, you blow it up and you actually look at it the size of, a, of an 8x10 or whatever on the size of a screen um, and you can actually see what the image looks like. And this is fantastic for when you're coaching, all right, because again, humans have the capacity to learn. They will look at those images and they will understand what their face is doing at that moment and then they will get better. They will continually get better if they're on the same page as you. And if your lighting looks really good and your actual image looks high quality, if your lighting's bad and there's some technical images and you show them a tethered image, again, you're not going to build the thread to the string to the rope to the chain. You know, you're going you're gonna to hurt that confidence because of the lack of quality in the image. Okay. If the quality's there, then it's just two people coaching and, and you're coaching your subject and it's two people looking at it and 
you're going, you can convey to them about expression and about angles and about what's going on and they can kind of learn their face. And it's the number one coaching tool I have is the tethered, the, the tethering because they're seeing what they're getting. They know what they get when they go out of the shoot. They can decide, they can understand that we're going to delete a ton of them. We're only going to keep the good ones. I only want the good ones. I only need the good ones. I'm actually like basically a 10% shooter at the beginning of a session. I'll take a hundred shots to keep 10. That's my thing. I'm always going for 10. So the 10 in that first look, it, uh, it's like a mental clicker going off in my head. I shoot a bunch of shots. If somebody's really good, then maybe I get 20%. Maybe I go for 10 shots, I take 50 pictures, right? Somebody's really good. If I take a hundred shots, they're probably not great, but we're warming them up. If I have to take 150 shots to get 10, we got a problem. And 200 shots to get 10, forget it. And after I'm done, guess where I go? I go over to the computer and, and since I'm tethered and I edit with them, I make them say whether they like them or not so I get a sense of what's going on. However, I've got tricks. So if, they've, if I've shot average, somebody who did well is 50 shots to get 10. I'll bring them over and go through the 50, no problem. If I shot 100, uh, I'll probably do that too. If I shot 150 or 200 shots, I'm not going through it with the person because that would mean that there's a lot more bad ones in there that they don't need to see because they will care more about their performance than the shebanging shot that I got that's the one of the best one and probably best shot of their life. Out of the 150, there's one in there that's fantastic. They won't care about that shot. They'll care about the 149 that sucked. So you have to be careful. So what you do is I send them off to change. This is like code. If my makeup artist here and it's a female, I'm like, go change and then the makeup artist is going to touch up for your next look. Throw that on. Meanwhile, I go behind my computer. I go, I get rid of like 120 of them. So I keep 30. I keep the 10 good ones. And then I got 20 that are mediocre, but pretty good. And I bring them back in before I get them in the, and we go through the 30 and then, and nobody ever has any clue. If I shot 200, they have no clue that I shot 200. They think I shot 30 anyway, or I could have said, ah, I got rid of a few, but here you go. And now you're building confidence through the tethering and they come back in front of the camera and boom, they nail it. Guys, I want you to think about what I'm doing with my subject. You already know, right? I'm, get, I'm hooking them up. I'm getting their jawline out. I'm, they're holding their sub. They're squinching like this. They're, they're like, I'm layering them like an onion. I got a million things going on. Their face feels like a raisin, right? But it doesn't look like a raisin, right? They can't see what their face looks like. They don't know. This is the number one thing that I've learned or my favorite thing that I've learned since I've started all of this is that your brain will try to tell you what your face looks like, but it does not know. So immediately they're like this and doing this and their brain's telling them, this is ridiculous. You can't look good. And, uh, and then what do I do? I show them the tethered picture and they're like, that look like that. I was like this and like this and like this. And now I look like that. How does that, that's crazy. Boom. I got their confidence. I built it now. Immediately they come back in and they listen to everything I said. I remember I would only do an hour session with returning clients because I wanted to have that rapport and all that stuff. I would, I would always try and do consultations because I wanted to meet them beforehand. What I found was I, my skill set just wasn't good enough to handle somebody walking in the door and getting a good shot out of them. Or, you know, they, if they were having issues, I couldn't get around them as well. As the direction changed and as I got better, now I can warm somebody up in 30 seconds. Like I could get a shebang in 30 seconds, two seconds, three seconds, whatever, first shot. So I decided to do one shot deals. So I'll go and I'll try in the first shot to direct them to nail, and I'll wait till I nail it and I shoot it. And then I'll say, I'll have them peek out of here where they can see the screen. I'll say, look at the screen. And they just, I've had people cry, like they'd look at it and be like, how did you do that? Uh, especially act actors get, you know, the, the headshot's a big deal and I'm expensive. So a lot of them, I've been named best headshot photographer in New York uh, numerous times by Backstage Magazine. So um, a lot of them know if they're coming here, they're, and a lot of them are out waiting tables 
haven't gotten any jobs, have crappy headshots, have all the talent in the world, but they can't get in the door because the headshot's bad. They come here and they invest in themselves. That's what they're doing. And I take that shot off the bat, the shot which they thought was impossible in one shot. And I tell, I pull them out, I show them the screen. And, and it's happened more than once where they cry right off the bat. And it amazes me because it's like, it's awesome. I'm like, I'm like, all right, calm down. It's cool. Guys and girls, guys and girls, it's amazing. I get them back in here and you see it's a collaboration at that moment. It's like all the things that they were worried about fade away and you go to work. All right, so you have to understand this. This is the key for you. Do you, do you see, was there any, if I had told her a gazillion times she was doing great and not shown her on the screen, it would have never hit home the way it did and she wouldn't have gotten as quickly, am I right? Absolutely. Right, and if I had shown you the back of the camera, which is like this big, right. do you think that that would have hit home as much as this? No. I don't think the back of the camera cuts it, guys. Mm -mm. You're not cutting it with the back of the camera. You're tethering. I want you to shoot tethered, and I want you to get a tethered setup going into Capture One and get it going so that you can show them this clearly just like this. All right, so I'm, pretty, I'm really happy with what, we, what she's learned. She's been able to take in this information rapidly and spit it back out into a picture. There's three main things going on here. Jawline, holding your sub for the arms, and the squinch, and the tiny smile too. There's four main things. So she got that, she got all four very quickly. I'm ready to roll. I want to give her the white background. I'm going to turn on the strobes. We're going to shoot more of the red, and then I'm going to start to change her and mix it up to do a couple different looks for her. All right, so Gina, you've been amazing up to this point. I'm unbelievable. But now I want to specifically, I'm very specific about where I put somebody's face. It's really important to me, even like to the tiniest degree. So in order to get you exactly where I want you, I want you to, there's a couple moves that I'm going to use. One is I call it the nose to the finger. I want you to imagine my, your nose is following my fingers every move, every single move it makes. You ready? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, you got this. That's amazing. Okay, so now let's say I put your nose right there. Mm -hmm. That's where I want your nose. Now, your angle of your, you can look at me while your nose is over there. It's okay. <laughs> your angle of your face becomes important. So your nose is where I want it, but let's say the angle I want to get. I want you to imagine that I took my hand and I karate chopped you in the face okay. and my hand is stuck right here. All right, in like your nose or something where attached. Now watch this, I want you to do this. There you go, right there, right there, perfect. Come back a little bit more, come back. Now over here a little bit, there, now go nose to the finger. Now go karate chop, there you go, just like that. So I'll karate chop you in the face and I'll do nose to the finger the rest of the shoot. Okay. You got it? Got it. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're layering. Remember, it's like an onion, right? You got the chin, she just did her hook right off the bat, she's, she's with me. So you're hooking. You're going chin out and down. Your eyes are coming into this lens for me. You're getting that forehead out a little bit further. Right, there you go. You're coming a step, tiny step forward for me. Perfect. The chin is going down a little bit and we're right there and I like it. And we're just gonna rock and roll. Get, jam that forehead forward out a little bit further. Right there, hold that. Now I wanna get the white background going. So I'm gonna turn on the strobes. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Let's try this. Jam that forehead out. There you go. Good. Give me your squinch. Throw it in. Sneak it by me. Good. Forehead out a little bit further. Hold that. Squinch it up a little bit more. There you go. Good. Now, I got my white background going. You look beautiful. The red looks beautiful on the white. I'm liking everything I see here. Great. All right. What I have to do, I've noticed that I love the shape of your face. Your parents hooked you up. Thank you me. got stuff going on. It's interesting. Mom, so there you go. <laughs> but I want I want to figure out which angle is the best. Like which angle is your really like I from what I've seen I I haven't seen a bad angle and I think your your features on every angle look interesting. But I want to try to do three little things and and hopefully you you'll get this. I want you to imagine that on the floor is a clock. All right. Okay. And you are at six o'clock and I'm at twelve. All right, so I'm at 12 o'clock. You're looking at me 
If I tell you to go 12 o'clock, that's basically what I consider a head-on headshot. You're looking straight into the camera, you're straight on. If I asked you to put your nose at one o'clock, what would you do? Oh, very good, see, you, humans have the capacity to learn, people. You see, this is amazing. So now go nose to 11. Yes, exactly. Now sometimes I'll make your body go to one o'clock and your nose to 11, try that. Now nose to 11, fantastic, stay right there. Get your chin out and down. Get your forehead out and down. Give me, hit me up with a little squinch while you're at it. Tilt your head on this angle with the karate chop. Hold that right there, fantastic. Let the teeth creep out of there. I'll take them if you there you get beautiful teeth. You can let them rip. There you go. Jam the forehead out. Remember, now, which your left eye, left eye. your left eye is the bigger eye. Yeah. No, your right eye is the bigger eye. Your left eye is the smaller eye. You got that? This one's bigger? Yes. So can you just do independent squinching? Let me see. The, yes. See your, oh my gosh. Who knew you were going to come into my life today? Holy smokes. Jam the forehead out. Do your, hold your sub. Go uh, one o'clock with the body, 11 o'clock with the face. Good. Nose this way. Nose to the finger. Keep going. Where's my squinch? Those eyes got big. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Guys, I didn't plan this. I didn't ask. Gina showed up on my doorstep. <laughs> You're amazing. Wow. And that, that angle, your face is gorgeous. I love it. People get in front of my camera and there's only two times that we actually take conscious control of our expression. I want you to think about your expression today. Did you control it? Did you do anything to control it? Did you walk down the street and go immediately go, oh, I have to pull the corners of my mouth up because I'm passing somebody to give them a friendlier, more approachable smile? I don't think so. I don't think you did. I don't think you did any of that today. I think, you know what did it for you? I think your subconscious did it. I think you subconsciously made every expression that you made for the entire day, right? There's only two times that we ever take conscious control of our expression. It's when we're in front of a mirror or when we're in front of a camera. And it amazes me. In front of a mirror, we can look back at ourselves and see our face and we can actually look at our expression and change it. In front of a camera, we're just guessing what our expression's like, but we don't have a clue. This is what I said before. Like, this is the most amazing thing to me. Our brain will try and tell us exactly what our face looks like. It thinks it knows, but it doesn't have a freaking clue. You have no idea what your face looks like and it's been on your face your entire life. You know how I know? I want you to take some self-portraits. Put them on a timer. Put your camera on a tripod. Take some self-portraits. You'll see. When you're starting to do some expression stuff, you'll see. So if this is the case where the only time we really know what our face looks like, even though it's flipped, we're in a mirror, right? Is when we're in a mirror. Guess who has to behave like the mirror for us? while we're being photographed. Who's the mirror? You're the mirror for your subject. You're the only thing looking back at them to tell them what could possibly be going on with this operation right here. You're it. I want you to remember that. Without you, they're flying by the seat of their pants with their face. Because, only because, they took conscious control over it. If our subconscious controls our expression, it makes us the most attractive that we can be. Hands down. From my research, easily, subconsciously driven expressions are where it's at. That's where my work is, that's where my shebangs are, that's where my lookability is 100. All with subconsciously driven expressions. If you're getting consciously driven expressions, which we have to do because they're consciously aware of their face, if you're going to tell them to do a squinch or a small smile or something like that, it's all going to be consciously driven. What I do is I teach them everything they need to know. Humans have the capacity to learn. I throw that out the window and I, I'm going deeper to get the subconsciously driven expressions to come through. And it's deep, guys. And this is why if somebody's not relaxed in front of your camera, it's on you. It's not on them. This is not a natural place to be in front of a camera. And taking control of your conscious expression is not a natural thing to do. I want you to think about this. It's like breathing, all right? Breathing, did you think about it today? I didn't think about it all day long. But we can hold our breath. 
I want you to hold your breath right now. Hold your breath. Okay, you held it. I got it. Let it go. You can breathe again, right? The minute you're holding your breath, it's like taking conscious control of your expression. There's only so long that you can do that for without breathing again. So you can get to the point where you get the subconsciously driven expression from your subjects. And it could be just for a split nanosecond. The brain cannot harbor two thoughts at the same time. We can do minor multitasking things, but we can't really concentrate on two major things at the same time. And one of the, my favorite things is that as humans, we like to get things right. So actually people will want to do the best for you in front of your camera. They want to do it well for you, not even for them, just for you because they're human. They want to get it right. That's just the way it goes. So now they want to get it right. They're consciously trying to get it right. And you're telling them move to the left, move to the right. And they're doing these consciously. You've had these people. They try to, they do the fake smile or pose they're like this. You, you got to tell them to shut their mouth. Stop that. You want to get, develop a subconsciously driven expression and they want to get it right. So you prey upon that. And I'm going to teach you how I want you to think about this right now. You are not allowed to think about a pink elephant. All right. I told you you weren't allowed to guess what happened. The pink elephant for a nanosecond went across the screen of your mind. You all saw a pink elephant, right? If for like that, at that moment, I could have shot you and I would have had a subconsciously driven expression because you can't have two thoughts. So if their concern for the camera is controlling their face and consciously, if you get their subconscious firing, you're going to get the most interesting expressions that you can. A subconsciously driven smile is the most attractive smile that we have. It just is. It's just amazing. It just, I don't even get it. There's been research done and I've had um, some interesting characters come into my workshops and show me some videos and stuff, especially with um, dentistry where uh, you can see the, the level of attractiveness of somebody's face change after they've had some, some dental procedure done. Like they didn't feel good about their face. I had the, there was a guy, he had dentures come out of his mouth and you could see his whole demeanor change. He put the dentures back in and he just lit up and his energy just changed. It's all, we just become more attractive as individuals and the actual muscles in our face and the way we pull our muscles in our face change as we become more confident in ourselves. So when you start a session, you got to start with conscious control of the face. It's the only way to start. You have to teach them stuff that they have to do as they learn, they get confident and comfortable in those positions. And that's when you start, you can start to direct them in a more haphazard kind of way to dive in, to get those subconsciously driven expressions. Let's try this. Let's do the opposite. So what I'm doing is I'm sussing out our good side, right? I'm playing with it. I'm playing with angles. I do this all the time. So I do the 12 o'clock, the one, we already did 12 o'clock. We're doing 11 and one. So let's try this. And I always like doing the body, the opposite way, the face, it's a maneuver. It's my favorite move. I call it the 11 to one or body one way face the other. So let's try that. Let's go body to 11 o'clock and go nose to one and try that. Let's see how that looks with the forehead jammed down. Eyes here, eyes here, eyes here. Throw in your squint, your eyes get big. Squinch that, that right eye, the right eye. There you go. Squinch a little bit of both and then just hit the right eye more. Jam the forehead out further. Hold it. If the teeth come out and the smile happens, that's what I want. That's fine. Chin down a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Karate chop it. Tilt the head a little bit this way. There you go. That's really cute. Good. Hold that right there. Fantastic. Work your nostrils this way a little bit. Chin down a little bit. Good. I just say nostrils to make you laugh. That was just like, how I work my nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> I could say nose this way, but it's funnier to say nostrils. So if you have the inclination to, to crack up, go ahead. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Let's try, uh, let's try something else. Let's do the body the same way as the nose. So I want you to go one o'clock on both. Fantastic. Look at her. This is rare. Extremely rare. You don't get this. You just, I didn't know what I was getting today. Now, since you've got one shoulder coming forward, I want you to drop your left shoulder towards the ground to get that jawline. 
There you go. Now I want you to jam the forehead out. Egyptian it a little bit. Karate chop to the face though. Now nose this way with the finger. There, stay right there. Now chin down slightly. That's amazing. Now give me my squinch. Now you guys, I'm doing the tilt on tilt. This is amazing. Hold that right there. Squinch it up a little bit more. Chin down, close the mouth, tiny smile. If I make you like, squinch it up a little bit more. There you go, hold that, squinch it up. Get that chin up a little bit. I'll take that, forehead out. There you go, good, good. Now I'm doing the untilt. Do you see how untilted you look? Did you feel that tilt? Look yeah. at that, look at that. Amazing, right? Super cute. You're cute on both sides. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Guys, I, I, I can have a field day with her. I don't know which angle to shoot. Very cute. Hold that smile. Jam that forehead out. Jam that forehead. Hold your sub. What are you doing? Are you got your sub held? Get that chin out. Now I'm going to teach you something. Squinch the eyes. There you go. Good. Chin down a little bit. Good. Hold that. Super cute. Good. I use my grid a lot. I'm putting my grid through the nose. When she's tilting and stuff, I'm watching it. So I keep her all very straight and contained. Subtlety is the key, guys. Don't over tilt. Don't none of this. None of that stuff. Jam that forehead out. Work the nose this way. Chin down a little bit. Nose this way a little bit. Now, eyes back to me. Yep. Hit a squinch there. I see. I'm waiting for it. Chin down. That's beautiful. There you go. Squinch it up. Gorgeous. That's it. Good. That's it. Let the teeth creep out of there. If that smile gets up, that's great. That's fantastic. Good. Now, if I, if I really want to get her laughing, I'll use direction that elicits that kind of response. Human behavior will start to dictate the jawline. That's a problem. If the jawline goes straight back, then we've got an issue. So that's what's going to happen when humans smile. And you've done it a million times. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to, direct you to make sure that when that happens I'm going to tell you and you're going to get your jawline out but you're going to keep the energy in your face when the smile was there all right so there you go I think the body positioning and the place you put them in is you're looking for their most attractive angles and and to accentuate their features that's different than what's happening with the expression. The expression's coming from three things on your face, I believe, essentially. Your mouth, your eyes, and your eyebrows are the three things that you can move on your face. That's where expression comes from. Uh, your features that you're trying to accentuate are jawline, right? Getting the jawline out and finding which side of their face is the most attractive. So there's so many variables here that you have to take into account to get them on their side with their angle and then hit them with the subconsciously driven expression so that the mouth, eyes, and eyebrows match up and give you something genuine that you didn't ask for, couldn't have them concoct. That's really what it's about. Now, you can still get amazing shots concocting them, but what will happen is as the, going back to the thread, the string, the rope, the chain, as they become a chain, when you're concocting them, then they'll let go of this ability or need, it's a need to control their face and that's when you get the best stuff. That's when the switch goes off and, and things happen. You're still putting them in positions but their face isn't being controlled because they're in an atmosphere that you created that's, that's, that's playful and you know they're just trying stuff. And then it becomes really, really fun and an amazing time. Here's one of my favorite ones. I'll give you some lines that I use. We'll get it more into it later. But I'll, this is one of my favorite ones. Nose this way a little bit. Here, hold that. Jam the forehead out. Chin down slightly. Good. Now, do your squinch with your little smile. That's perfect. Chin down a little bit. Good. Now, just add a touch of beauty to that. No, no, no. I need... Gina, just a touch of beauty. Go. No, I'm waiting. <laughs> no, come on. Where's, you, just a touch. Don't go all the way. We've got a lot of pictures to take. Hold that. No, add it. I'm going to wait for the beauty. When, when you hit me with it, I'll take the picture. <laughs> oh my God. That's good, isn't it? No, yeah, I'm just good. messing. I'm just messing with you. Guys, if you notice, I'm recomposing every time. And a lot of times I get lazy. I don't want to go nose to the finger. I don't know if you noticed this. I don't know if you noticed it. Did you notice that I was saying, go nose this way a little bit? Go nose this way. Chin down, get your chin down. Go nose over here. There you go, perfect.
Good. Your nose back over here. Over here. There you go. Hold that. Hold that. Squinch it. Jam the forehead out. There you go. Good. Guys, that's called camera prodding. Okay? Oh. Camera prodding is one of my... Is, I'm lazy, so I don't do... I do that. I could do nose to finger. I do karate chop. Once they get used to it, I'll camera prod them, see if they like it, and then I'll get, go camera prodding. Good. Jam your forehead out. Go nose this way. I'm going to teach you something else. Chin down a little bit. Eyes here. Squinch it up. Good. The other thing is I want you to notice, guys, what I'm doing when I direct her. When I direct you, can you tell that, like, I'm, like, talking you through the camera, right? Right. So you make a direct connection down the center of the lens, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I was here talking to you, you're going to look there. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So what I want you to do when you direct somebody, you can direct big things like I did here with the nose to the finger and stuff, but as soon as you're shooting, you're doing what I consider camera talk. Down here. You're down here. Jam the forehead out. You're in here. The connection's made with the camera. That's called camera talk. When you're here, the eye is in the viewfinder. If you're shooting a mirrorless camera, it's very strange to be like this, looking at the back of your screen and have them not make connection with the with the down the center of the lens you have to look through your viewfinder If your camera doesn't have a viewfinder then just fake it or something but you gotta look through your viewfinder some of these mirrorless cameras don't have viewfinders I believe but if they all if they do you gotta get in here and camera talk them chin down beautiful corners of the mouth toward the earlobes jam the forehead out there you go chin up slightly good squinch the right eye there you go the, the, yeah exactly good job she's rocking thank you Gina oh wow Look at this. How do you beat that? Get out here. Get out here. Get out here. See? I got an oh wow. Did you hear that? Yeah. Verbally, out of her mouth. Oh wow. That's nice. what, why we do this. She got two oh wows. Exactly. The images that you give somebody are simply a byproduct of, of the experience that they had with you. That's what I believe. So the experience that she's having here is going to be memorable. You know, the image is the byproduct, right? So you've got to give them an experience any chance you get. Are you having an experience? Totally. Cool. <laughs> cool. Good. This is where I was trying the different angles. Now we went white. Look at the look at the eyes are a little vacant there, right? Yeah. The white looks great. That looks um, see how I'm warmer? Yes. Really beautiful. See the angles are that's cute. That's really cute. Your angles are good. See, letting the teeth come out when it's natural, it looks very real. Yeah, and it felt way bigger than that when I was doing it. Yeah. That's why it kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, that gets a little bigger, That's but a it's little cute. Bigger, yeah. Amazing. That angle works, too. I can't believe you got I like this angle, eyes. too. Yeah. I mean, I like every angle on you. That's crazy. <laughs> Amazing. You look adorable. Thank you. Okay, so here, this, you were really tilted and I untilted you. Do you remember that? Yes, but I love this. Yeah, I like it too. No, I did it. That, you're cracking up and you're a little blurry. That's yeah. funny. If I'm not seeing bad ones, it means that we're not playing enough. Like, I, I want to see ones that force me to delete them too. But you're doing great. Oh, nice and bitchy. <laughs> Good bitchy, Look bad. at that. No, look at that. I like that. I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. That now the, the now the, that right eye is getting a little too small there. That's cute. That's super cute. I have not seen a bad angle. It's blank, but it's very pretty. I like this one. Yeah, yeah, it's very pretty. It's a little vacant in the eyes, but mm -hmm. it's very pretty. I should have my glasses on. Oh, I that like one. that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You get a lip jump right in the center. I've never. That's very rare. So, guys, a lip jump is when the lips, when you don't smush them together. See how you see the teeth right there? Oh, yeah. Like, that's just the design of your lip. <laughs> so, I call it a lip jump. It's when the, most of the people, the center of the lip hits first, and then you get a lip jump on the side. Gina's got a lip jump in the center. So, what I would do is I can, out, when it's zoomed out this far, it doesn't really bother me. Right. If for some reason it bugged me, I'd have the retoucher close it, or I'd concentrate with you to smush your lips together mm -hmm. so that the lip jump doesn't appear as prevalent, or separate the, so that the teeth creep out of there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's adorable. So that's, that's a genuine smile. Yeah. So a genuine smile is called a Duchenne smile. A Duchenne smile, there was this guy in the 1800s that jammed electrodes into his face. 
and what he found was the zygomatic major pulls the cheeks, pulls the, oh. the mouth open, but it doesn't appear to be a real smile unless the abicularis oculi, which is the squinching muscle, goes. So see how your squinching muscle is going? Uh -huh. You got all this stuff going on? Yeah. But that means it's a genuine, real genuine smile, which is what we want. We want these real genuine smiles to come out. And then when they come out, you get ones that are weird, and you delete those, right? And then you get crazy stuff that's funny and Facebookable. No. Yeah. But do you see how you lose your jawline when you're... Totally. Yeah. Totally see that. This is normal human behavior, guys. Jawlines go back when we crack up. You've got to make sure they pull it together eventually. And then you, you, look at this shot. I love that shot. I like that, too. So normally, just to give you a little aside... I am saying a bunch of things and doing a bunch of things to create laughter on my shoots, not necessarily for the laughter shot, because I like all these, but they're not really usable. What I like about them is that when your brain is cracking up, when you come back to reality, there's a very, you're very chill. You're not thinking, there's no apprehension usually in the face, and that allows me to get a beautiful shot right after the laughter. Guys, I wanted to implement this into this tutorial just so you got a sense of expressions and where my thought process is going. So this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw, which is not one of my skill sets, a range of expression gauge for you. So I want you to imagine that this gauge is a line. So the center of the line, this is uh, blank. Completely blank is the center of the line, right? And the line is going to go like this. There we go. We have a line. The center of the line is blank. Over here is completely... How do you spell ecstatic? Ecstatic. That's a C. Static. All right? Over here is angry. All right? Angry, blank, ecstatic. All right, right here and right here, these expressions in here suck. This is where most expressions live, right in here. Any negative expression on the face, usually photographed, gets photographed in here. Any positive expression gets photographed in here. There's not enough going on. It's completely blank. I don't want you to shoot in there. However, over here is laughter right and over here where are we going we're going over here is like devious any yeah cocky right in this area right in like here inside this bar over here these are just so negative you don't want to get over there now the key to this is this what lives right here is confidence and approachability it's right there it's not in here this is all blank once you get here you nail confidence and approachability the key to this is that you have to jump this area so a lot of times I'll jump into laughter and then I'll slide them back down into CNA so I'm jumping people into this ecstatic, crazy spot. And then as residual laughter starts, I'm shooting through this. So I'm getting all these nice, smaller, 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 smaller smiles, confidence and approachability right there. I had Primrose in front of my camera and she's very gummy and I wanted to capture this image, right? And this is where the, the mouth is kind of, the, the lip has come down and I show a little bit of teeth, a nice soft smile, relaxed lips. Then I needed to capture a little bit bigger smile, so not too big, but this image, where she does look a little gummy, right? If you, now just wait, I'm gonna show you her real gums. Um, but this is actually shot once the laughter comes out and on the way down when the, when the gums start to subside. Now here's her real gums. That is Gumsville, guys. Now over here, you guys all know, my favorite expression is sneaky. 
Sneaky lives right here. So again, I got to have them play. I can have them mess around and get really mean or make weird faces or whatever. And then I slide them back in to Sneaky. Do you get that? That's how many, think about the range of expressions the human face can make and what we want to capture as headshot photographers. Everybody goes, well, I want to capture their personality. Well, their personality is going to be captured in an expression. It's like a reset. Unbelievable. Yeah, because you don't think about it. And that yeah. I would call a shebang. Because now I'm like connected with you. You're not overly squinchy, but there's a look in your eye. Like you don't have to be overly squinchy for me to get drawn into the image. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I have this word, it's called lookability. Let me just define lookability for you. I make up words, you know I make up words. I'm gonna make up words. Here's a word I made up, it's called lookability. And I defined it. It's an image's ability to secure attention from an onlooker. You take pictures for them to be seen, don't you? Like we take a picture, we wanna look at it, I wanna show it to others. I want the person I shot to look at it, I want all their friends to look at it. I want it to secure attention. In order to do that, your picture has to have something special. There has to be something going on. It just can't be flat. It just can't be a, a random image. There has to be, for me, it's based on expression and, and the look of the person and the look, obviously, the technical look of it. I actually say the second definition is a shebanging shot that makes you want to stare at that sucker. That's really what it's about. That's why we take pictures. I think our pictures are taken to be seen. So I want you to create for yourself uh, a mental, and this is kind of subjective, on a scale of 1 to 100. I'm going to call it a lookability scale. How much on a scale of 1 to 100 does your image uh, that you're looking at that's in your current portfolio secure your attention? And just give it a number. And anything less than 50 gets deleted. I'm tough. Anything more than 50, you can keep it in there. But lookability scale of 80, 90, 100, this is, I use this in coaching because it's just sometimes it's hard to say, there's really nothing wrong with this image, but I just don't want to look at it anymore. That's low lookability. It might not be a technical thing, it just might be the person isn't drawing you in. For me, do you see how there's something that I'm latching onto that has a higher lookability in this image than some of the others. Like, I, yeah. I don't know what it is. You're just, I'm drawn into it. Yeah. If you feel drawn into an image, it's got a high lookability. Like, this one's drawing me in. So I'd say it's like a 60, 70, 80, or something like that. Like, 100%, you're like fixed on the thing, right? So if you've got this scale, and you might get a sense of it, um, you can kind of rate your images. You know how good your images are. You know when you look at them generally, and if you don't, then you can ask other people and get, get if you, people are straight with you, you'll get the right answer. But on a lookability scale, it's really, it's really easier to say, okay, I understand why I want to look at this image longer than I want to look at this one. Maybe this one shouldn't go next to my portfolio because I would give this a 40 and I'd give this one an 80, and then you delete the 40, you take new pictures, and you, you, then you have kind of a system for yourself. It's just a good way to throw it out there to people. So I created and it's really helped me with coaching. The other thing is that you have to create it, you have to create a look for your work. So if your work doesn't match what you're doing now, if you lit it differently then and your lighting's better now, you gotta you can't have an attachment to your work. The lookability is gonna change. So our job as portrait photographers is to take the best picture we can of the human being that comes into the room or in front of our camera, right? I think the thing is is that as portrait photographers, we put a lot of pressure on our on ourselves to get that shot and a lot of people make it dependent upon the level of attraction society places on these people as they walk in so think about lookability versus attractiveness attractiveness is a physical thing that's happening lookability is when you get an attractive person's brain engaged and then the the, the level of their attraction goes through the roof and you get drawn into that picture. And it, could, it doesn't even matter if somebody's attractive or not. Take this shot, for example. I love this shot. This is one of my favorite, with the, and it's got a lot of lookability for me. He's got a mohawk. He's got this engaged look on his face. I, I took this shot. This was a guy, this is Alfredo. He was in my class, 
and uh, and he was sitting in the front row, and I saw him, and he's got this mohawk and this beard and everything that you see, and he had this scarf on, and that's my jacket, actually, I put that jacket on him, and he's piercing you with those eyes, and he's got this look that just, out of all, a lot of my work, I, I, I can rate my stuff on this lookability. This is one of my highest rated lookability shots. That's what I'm talking about. So creating these, look, this, these images of lookability isn't luck, right? It's, have, it's happening because I'm crafting it. You're going to craft it. And the comfort of the person as you craft it and their belief in you is what creates the lookability. They're going to start having fun. They're start getting to give you different expressions. You're going to be able to experiment with them. You're going to get different angles of their face. And then, boom, shakalaka, you are going to nail it. And you're going to have lookability up to wazoo. This is cute, too. Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm drawn into these. If I'm not drawn into it, then, like, that one I don't like as much. Yeah. Something about I, it. I can Don't see know that. what it is. Yeah. The tooth or the smile or it's starting to look a little creepy. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But I would delete that. So that would go like that. No, the lookability on this went down the tubes. Totally. Do you see it? Yeah. Like, I don't want to look percent. at it. No. That thing's got to go. All right, let's get rid of it. I should be using my color name. Um, <laughs> more lookability with the squinch than with that. But I yeah. still don't like that jawline. That jawline's not out. Look, better. Wow. Better. Better. Beautiful. It's a little blank in the eyes. The yeah. eyes are a little big, but the angle's beautiful. Now it's overly squinchy, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's too big in the eyes mm -hmm. for me, right? Same with that. Yeah, it's a little no flat. Jaw. Jawline's out, but it's not giving. That's better. More interesting. All right. What do you say we change it up and get you in another outfit? Let's do it. All right. Let's do that. Cool. I have never met Gina before today. Gina was a friend of a friend. She came in to help us with the tutorial. And um, my thing is that I really, I want to photograph people that I've never met before, that I've never really, I spoke to you briefly on the phone just to tell you yeah. to come in. And yep. it was very quick. It was like a two minute conversation. And yep. she's like, I'm coming. I was like, okay. And um, she walked in the door and we were immersed in, the, in this type of thing. The thing is, is that your connection with humans is really what this is about. However, she's an amazing individual. I mean, I felt like I connected with you right off the bat. Ditto. But talk about how you felt when you first walked in about your pictures and actually you, how you would perform in front of the camera. When I first came in, of course, it was intimidating seeing all of the setup and everything. And I was definitely nervous and anxious that I wouldn't be able to provide anything to you. Which is true of yeah. most people. This is normal. So people come in anxious. They don't know what to expect. A lot of times, yeah, there's a performance based. So that's a performance based anxiety based on how you will perform in front exactly. of my camera. Exactly. And then the fact that she wanted to get something good for herself. And she and people, believe it or not, I mean, people like to do well for others. So they want they actually feel like I want to perform for you when it's their pictures. I'm like, it's your pictures. You don't have to perform or worry about me. It's your it's their pictures. Right. Right. Um, but the key element that I wanted her to talk about, how anxious were you once we started? Um, after I got comfortable and confident with you, it became fun and easy. Right. Yeah. It was, it kind of dissipated, went away. It just went, it was gone. Yeah. Right. Up to the ceiling. And it happened. But that's because I trusted you. Right. To lead me in the right direction. It wasn't because I suddenly gained all this confidence within my own face and body and movement within like the first 10 minutes that we were starting. Remember all the weird stuff I had you doing? So weird. Felt weird. Felt weird. Looked yeah. good. Looked great. Yeah. And that really did it, right? And, and, totally. and, and it drove it home with the tethering, right? To show you? Yes. I don't want to put words in your mouth. but No, it, it definitely did. Getting to see the technique, the end result of that technique was monumental. I wouldn't have felt confident any other way. I would just feel weird constantly. Yeah. Seeing it is believing it and then constantly working towards it and knowing that these little funky tips were what was getting you the result mm -hmm. allowed you to chill out and have fun. Yeah. And I wanted to keep doing them. There you go. I'm doing them right That's now. That's it. She's doing them. She's going to continue to do them.